Well, it's been almost a year since the last walk, um, so I didn't really complete it, did I? Various reasons for that. Some of it laziness, some of it uh, family matters that had to be attended to. But uh, it's now August uh, 2015, and I'm starting where I left off last time, just outside of Packwood House, and should end up the other side of Bannham's Wood today. Um, let's get on with it. If I didn't finish it by the end of last year, or maybe there's a chance I'll finish it by the end of this year. There's only three more stages left. Uh, not a good start, because within two minutes of, of setting off, I broke my walking pole. So uh, that's the second one I've lost on this one. That'll have to be replaced at some point. But uh, I expect it to be a nice day today. You can see already behind me that the sun's out, it's blue sky, uh, perfect walking weather, and uh, I've got no excuse to, to finish this one. It's only 11 and a half miles. There's a little bit of canal walking, I think, a fair bit of lane walking. So, yeah, let's let's get on with it and see how we get on. Packwood House is a timber-framed Tudor manor house originally constructed between 1556 and 1560 in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I for the Featherstone family, who owned it for over 300 years. It then passed to the Ash family from Birmingham and they spent the next two decades creating the house you see today, including 16th and 17th century furnishings obtained from nearby Baddersley Clinton. The famous yew garden, containing over 100 trees, was laid out in the mid-17th century by its then owner, the lawyer, John Featherston. The clipped yews are supposed to represent the Sermon on the Mount, with some of the specimens standing at over 50 feet. The extensive grounds, including a lake, are not evident from the front of the property, so a full tour is required to see the place in its entirety. Luckily, this is possible almost all the year round, as the Ash family donated Packwood House to the National Trust in 1941. You always feel like you're babbling in front of the camera when you've got to stand there and say something. I'm sure I just babbled there, but never mind. Nothing wrong with a bit of babbling. Uh, I do like a bit of babbling. Very good at it. nothing like a nice bit of canal walking and I know I've got a short bit of canal to do now uh, as you've just seen it's very pretty but again I wouldn't hazard a guess as to what canal this is um, I'll tell you uh, I'll tell you later on the video could be oh I'm not even gonna guess every time I do that I'm wrong pretty nice though or nice and pretty I was, in fact, on the Stratford-upon-Avon canal, which I'd walked parts of before on other long-distance paths. It's a 25-mile-long waterway that starts in Kings Norton, Birmingham, and ends at Stratford, with connections to other important canals along the way. It was completed in 1816 after almost 20 years of construction and had a brief career carrying freight barges until the railways arrived to take its business away. By the 1940s, it had fallen into disrepair and become unnavigable, and was close to being filled in until enthusiasts stepped in to save it. Restoration began in the 60s, and it is now fully navigable once more. Well, I've just passed through a... I don't know what place it is, but it's, it's immaculately tended. There's sweeping lawns, there's a huge drive of block paving stone uh, over there. I don't think you can see it, but I'll show you in a minute. There's what looks like a fully restored windmill. And just back along the way, I passed a, a gypsy caravan. So it's a, it's a strange old place. It's kind of um, almost unreal. Whoever owns it, it's worth a bob, I'll tell you that much. I think I'm heading towards a motorway by the sounds of it. And I'm also heading towards people shooting guns. I hope the motorway comes first. Well, 
I've just come onto Ireland's Lane and according to the guidebook I'll walk along this for about a mile and uh, that's one of the things about today there's been a good mix of field and lane walking quiet lanes like this one and even a bit of canal thrown in so I haven't had to resort to my GPS at all today it's been really straightforward and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far so I reckon I've got another hour and a half of walking and then I might stop for lunch before I tackle Henley and Arden and Bannon's Wood. Well, having said that it was all so easy and I hadn't got lost, I spoke too soon, um, just after Ireland's farm, well in fact probably on Ireland's farm, there was a field full of, uh, well, there might have been heifers, there might have been bullocks. I don't know what they were, small cows. But they were, well, you know, very frisky, very inquisitive, lots of them. As soon as I appeared, they tried to mob me, and I thought, look, I promise I wouldn't take risks. So I uh, found another route, or at least I thought I had, which took me around the fields and back onto the road. Except I ended up getting a little bit lost, and I ended up in somebody's front garden, which was a bit cringing. But um, I finally got back onto route properly, and I've uh, I've just climbed up the the hill that I was just shooting a second ago, and I'm just taking a breather before I head into some woodland. Uh, I don't intend to stop until about one o'clock. The detour has probably cost me 20 minutes of time now, um, so I'll add that on and try and make it up before lunch. Oh yeah, and I forgot to add, uh, climbing over the stile down there, um, my trousers have ripped just underneath the, the zippy thing. Uh, it's noticeable if you look, but then again, I hope people aren't looking there. But it's going to be a bit breezy for the rest of the walk. The best trousers I've got as well. I'm going to have to try and repair these. So that's a pole and a pair of trousers. Uh, so it's been quite an expensive trip so far. Well, that's Henley and Arden in the distance. And over there, that little woodland atop a hill. I think that's Bannum's Wood and my car is about a mile the other side of that so I've made pretty good progress I'm going to stop for lunch now conveniently provide a bench and then uh, make my way through Henley Henley in Arden, once infamous for its Victorian lunatic asylums and now noted for its ice cream outlets is a comparative newcomer in terms of its history there's no mention of it in the Doomsday Book and it may not have existed at all until the 12th century. Today, its mile-long high street is an official conservation area. It was quiet on this Sunday afternoon, and the Millennium Way allowed me only the briefest of visits, entering at Bow Desert Lane with its two old churches, a quick step along the high street where its ice cream outlets were all closed, and an exit via its railway station. Henley and Arden in the distance and in the middle distance are all the fields I've just crossed mostly grassland and this cornfield is is the, uh, the side of a hill which leads to Bannum's Wood which I've just climbed up uh, it's not a particularly massive hill but at the end of the day it's enough thank you very much and um, Bannum's Wood is that way as far as I know now I'll just go through Bannum's Wood drop onto the road and then there's perhaps a, a bit of a maybe a mile of road walking and then it's done I'm in the middle of Bannon's Wood now, and once again, there's nobody here, apart from that bloody bird. It's quiet again. I get the feeling I'm the only one here. It's kind of peaceful, quite nice, but at the same time, it's a little bit eerie, I think. I just hope I don't get lost this time. I've 
no idea. Well, there we are, back at the car. Uh, day done. A bit strange, I was going through Ballam's Wood and I wanted to find this uh, this bench that Colin and I had seen the last time we came through a couple of years ago. And it's gone, I mean, whether it's gone completely or whether it's just buried under the undergrowth, I don't know, but I couldn't find it. But uh, it was interesting going through the woods. They're as quiet as they were before. I'm not sure if anybody goes up there. It's, uh, yeah, it's a special place, I quite like it up there. Anyway, I'm babbling again. Um, 11 and a half miles done today. Two days left. Second day is about 13 and the last day is about 15, so they're longer days. And they go out over that way into Worcester where I've never walked before. So this ends the, the familiar section, if you like, for me that started way back in Leamington Spa. So two days left to go. Mm -hmm.